If you're new to live streaming and content creation, I completely understand that audio can seem a little bit confusing and overwhelming. At first, you just want to play games or make videos and not have to worry about the 10 different types of microphones that you can choose from and which one's going to sound best for your space. First things first, though, obviously, we're going to go into OBS soon and I'm going to give you settings of filters and how you set stuff up. But you want to be able to actually set up the physical hardware in the best way possible. So step number one is get your microphone in the correct position. I see a lot of people who have microphones dynamic ones, condenser ones, any type of microphone, they set it up in the wrong place. Like right now, my microphone is literally about five, six inches from my mouth. And as you can hear, sounds good and isn't picking up much room sound because I'm so close to the microphone. Sounds professional, has that bassy radio kind of sound. But a lot of people make the mistake of just having their microphone nearby. They put it out of the way, very much like this. So it's a couple of feet away from them. And you can kind of still hear me, but I'm going to have to boost that volume, which means it boosts the room sound as well. And you're going to have reverb echo all of the sounds are going on around you and it's not going to sound very good so get the microphone as close to you as possible preferably using a microphone boom arm or a microphone stand or something just get it close to your mouth preferably like five six inches away like this and it will sound good and clean professional and you'll be very happy with the sound you originally get from the microphone once you've got the microphone placement correct, the next step is actually getting the microphone volume or gain set correctly so that you have a good base to start adding filters and effects and stuff in OBS. Obviously, right now I'm using a short SM7B and this microphone is plugged into a GoXLR, which is managing all my like gain and filters and preamps and making this sound the correct volume. But you guys might not have something like that. You might have a simple USB mic with like a gain dial on it or a mixer or a standalone preamp or whatever. But all of those ways are going to have a way of changing the volume of the microphone. So to start, obviously you've got your microphone placement correct so get in that position and start talking testing out the volume and stuff and see where it is and then change your gain so that in OBS it's hitting around that minus 12 mark on the audio meters once you've got your microphone set at minus 12 decibels in OBS that's going to be a great base level to actually add all the filters and effects and stuff we're going to add in a second so we've got our hardware set up and we're finally in OBS ready to add some filters. But before we do that, we want to make sure that everything's set up correctly so we can actually judge the levels properly and make sure we're actually getting everything correct before starting. So go to some settings and whenever that loads up, you'll go to audio, make sure sample rate's 48 and then find your microphone here. Mine's this chat mic, make sure it's selected, obviously. And the thing you want to change the most in here is meters. So instead of this sample peak, you want to change the true peak instead. So as you can see right now, sample peak is telling me that I'm clipping or at least in the red at around minus 10, minus nine on these bars, which is not correct. You're not going to clip around there. It's, it's lies. It lies to you. And a lot of people seem to think that's where you should be. And that's what's going to clip no so go to meters change that to true peak obviously like i said and then when you press apply your peak is now here which is like minus two minus three decibels instead which is a much more like correct representation of where things are going to clip and peak and just sound terrible so now we can get started with filters. Editing Andrew here. Something I completely forgot to mention when making this video is obviously in the next section we're going to be talking about filters and effects and stuff and you want to be able to hear what you're actually doing to your microphone. So in order to be able to do that you want to go to OBS, find where your microphone is, click these dots here, go to advanced audio properties and then where it says your mic or whatever you've named it here, go to monitor and output and then that should allow you to hear your filters and effects and what it's being changed which will make editing stuff easier. Anyway, filters. Okay, so the first filter we're going to add in today is a noise gate because, well, as you all know, as a creator or a streamer, you're going to probably have like a PC or a fan or air conditioning or other noise happening in your house. So a noise gate is going to basically be able to turn your microphone off when you're not talking. Obviously, all my filters are already here, but if yours isn't already, you go plus noise gate and add it. And then when you do that, you'll see all of these options. So close threshold is basically the thing that like if your audio goes below this, then your microphone will switch off and then an open threshold is your microphone will then turn on once it goes above this volume. Attack time is basically the time it takes for the gate to open once you've actually exceeded the threshold. Next we have the hold time which is basically the minimum amount of time that the gate will stay open once you've hit that threshold. I leave it at default at 200 milliseconds and then finally we have release time which is the amount of time it takes to roll off or fade out the audio once it's gone back under the threshold again. The way that I like to try and figure out what my threshold settings should be is basically shut up for a few seconds while watching the audio meters and then that way you'll be able to see what the background noise is in your room so for example if i shut up now 
you'll be able to see that my background audio is around minus 45 decibels, meaning that I should put my close threshold slightly above that. So if it's at minus 45, I'm going to put my close threshold at around minus 40, and then my open threshold should be about 5 decibels louder than that. So instead of that, I'm going to go up to minus 35. And then in theory, you should be able to hear me talk like this, but when I shut up The audio goes completely off now, which is perfect for this type of setting But obviously play around with it take the time to actually figure out what settings are best for you And honestly, it doesn't really matter that much if there's a tiny bit of noise But you just don't want the background noise to be super distracting and annoying for viewers to watch Next, we're going to be going over compression, which is basically super important for live streams, especially when you're like either shouting or you whisper or whatever. It keeps things balanced and a lot easier to listen to. So this is my compressor setup, and I'm going to go through my settings and how I use it and what each setting does. But I will say I'm not an audio engineer, so someone can probably explain this in a much more detailed and mathematical way. However, that's very complex, and I just know how to use this as like a content creator or streamer. So let's talk about ratio. Ratio basically is the amount of compression that you're going to be adding to your audio it's the thing that balances out the sound so that it sounds even and isn't too loud or too quiet for example if i whisper like this you'll still be able to hear me at a solid volume but also if i go very loud it's not too loud so that's what the ratio does ideally for voices you want around three to one four to one's okay as well but if you go higher than that it becomes very flat and unbalanced and it's kind of just too boring because you get rid of a lot of the human inflections you can't have volume or anything it's literally just a monotone sound so stick with three to one or maybe four to one if you like a lot more compressed on that radio sound that some people like attack is obviously the same as noise gate it's how quickly the compressor turns on except this time i don't have it at one i have it a little bit later because obviously i think if i have it at one millisecond i've had some audio issues in the past and you get some weird glitchy stuff happening so i give it at least 10 milliseconds to kick in release is the same as noise gate as well it's going to be like how long it takes to turn off the compressor one it goes back under this threshold and finally we have output gain which is something that's quite important because obviously you're going to be compressing the audio down which is ultimately going to be making everything quieter so output gain adds that decibels back in so for example if i have my compressor turned on here as you can see my output gain is currently at zero decibels and that means that my output audio of me speaking is going to be around minus 15 minus 10 decibels which in my opinion and most audiences opinion will be way too quiet they will hate you for having your output output volume at this it's not good so to fix that you want to add some output gain back in to get that volume back up to a usable level so right now i'm at minus 15 minus 10 so i'm going to keep adding in some gain until i get around minus five on these meters which i think should in theory be around is it five decibels maybe a little bit louder like so I'm gonna go 6.5 probably 6.5 and then as you can see I'm at now around more like minus 5 going a little bit into like minus 3 or so but I'm still not clipping which is great after you finish setting up your compressor, something you might want to add to OBS is actually an EQ to improve the overall sound of your microphone. However, OBS doesn't have one built in, so you're going to download a plugin to actually be able to use the EQ. There's two which I usually suggest, and one is from Reaper.fm and the other one is TDR Nova. I'll put links to both websites down below in the doobly-doo so you can actually go download them and test them out and see which one works best for you. Personally, the EQ that I like to use in my OBS is TDR Nova for no other reason than it's just more aesthetic looking and I found it easier to actually understand what's going on once you've downloaded your plugin of choice obviously you want to add it to obs and we do it the same way as we did before with the plus button so you press plus go down to vst and then you'd find the one that you actually want to have which i've got here is tdr nova but obviously i could use reaper and stuff as well but tdr nova and i'm going to rename that one into obviously eq Perfect. Currently, I've already got my EQ set up here, which is how I have mine set up. But I want to add a side note before I say anything about EQs is that it's very, very subjective. No matter what microphone you use or who you are or what, it's all going to be different because, well, no one's voice sounds the same. No one's in the same room. No one's using the same setup. So EQ is very subjective and going to be very specific for every single individual person. So basically, you're going to have to play around with this to your own tastes and what you think sounds good however i'll give you a couple of tips on what i think 
usually works for voices. So when it comes to EQing, basically the idea is that you remove frequencies that don't sound good to us and add in the ones that you want to emphasize. So to remove ones at first, I would advise removing any frequencies below or lower than 60 hertz because anything lower than that is basically going to be out of your vocal range. There's no one that really sounds down there. And that's going to be stuff like AC, cars driving past, fans, fridges humming, anything like that is usually going to live in 60 hertz and lower and you don't need that in there because it's just going to be bad for your voice secondly you want to do a low pass filter which is the opposite you want to remove all the hiss like hiss and um high pitch frequency sounds and stuff in the very very high end so anything that's like above fifteen thousand kilohertz is usually something that you're not going to need either so basically all we've got left now is our vocal range and i want to improve that a little bit so what i do for mine personally is i improve the bass a little bit by adding in some around 100 hertz and a bit around the 250 hertz as well and then i remove some frequencies from around 500 hertz because that's the area that's going to be very muddy there's no clarity in that kind of range so it's not always good it doesn't really cut through and it just doesn't sound very good so i remove a little bit around 500 hertz afterwards i then add in some high ends because lots of our vocal range is in that higher end so anything that's kind of around the thousand to three thousand area like anywhere in there is usually the area that we listen to the most our ears are attuned to listening to like the two thousand ish kilohertz tone ish area so that's a good place to actually emphasize a little bit don't go too far because it'll sound too like hard so i always add in a little bit here which is like two two and a half thousand kilohertz i've bumped up a little bit and that's going to improve my like intelligibility and stuff you'll be able to hear me and it should hopefully cut through anything else that i'm using like music or game or anything that's in the background that kind of frequency is going to be able to be heard however this is so so basic because well i can't really advise specifically because i will take like hours doing this there's other videos and i'll probably link one or two because i think like podcastage and stuff do good videos in-depth videos about eq because it's very specific and very nuanced basically and i'd be here all day trying to make this video so that's basically what i do for my voice it's very simple overall because well i'm using a shore sm7b and out of the box this sounds great anyway so but it depends on your microphone your setup and stuff so you're gonna have to play around watch some other videos and figure out how eq works and what works best for you if everything's gone to plan, you've set it up all correctly, you should have a microphone that is loud enough and sounds pretty good. However, it's not immune from clipping right now, so we're going to set up some safeguards and some filters to avoid any clipping when you get excited or loud on stream or in your content. So the filter we're going to add to avoid any clipping is actually called a limiter. Makes sense, it's going to limit the volume. So do what we did before plus sign limiter and obviously it's going to be here mine's already here though limiter super simple in obs though you only really have two options you've got threshold and release threshold is basically telling the limiter where to actually stop the audio if it gets too loud so you're never going to go over this whatever you set it as i have mine set at minus five decibels meaning that the max volume that it'll ever go to is minus five decibels test 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 as you can see it's to go into minus five decibels so set it to minus five decibels like i have and also release a little bit longer than this so i'm going to set mine to around 200 milliseconds just so it doesn't just suddenly stop so yeah 200 milliseconds and that's your limiter pretty much set up however there's one more thing i like to do after the limiter because obviously minus five decibels is loud enough but i like that little bit extra just so it can hopefully stay above music and games and stuff especially if you're live streaming so the last thing i do is after the limiter add in a gain filter which obviously same as before press plus and then go down to gain and then add that in and then finally for the game setup i like to add in an extra like two and a half decibels so in theory it should get limited at minus five and then you add in that two and a half so then you're actually maxing out your volume at around minus two decibels which is very close to clipping but actually just underneath audio engineering is absolutely wild to me because although this video seems very complex and in-depth and kind of long it's still only just scratching the surface of what there is to know in audio engineering and mixing and obs and stuff but all this basic information is more than good enough to get you started with content creation and live streaming and stuff because we've managed to turn our audio from this 
which isn't exactly the best sound in the world, to something more like this, which is a lot more professional and even closer to what you'd hear like on the radio. Hopefully this video was useful to you though, and if you think I've missed anything, got anything wrong, or you'd like me to cover anything in the future, leave me a comment down below. I really appreciate that. Remember to like the video and check out any of my other videos on filmmaking and content creation, and I'll see you all in the next one.